Hello, my name is Alexander Toshev, and in this session we're going to talk about the Gibson Simulation Tool Challenge. This challenge is a cooperation between Stanford University and Robotics at Google. The topic of this workshop is Embodied AI. Embodied AI is the study of computer vision in the context of a bigger task. A task where a system not only needs to perceive the world around it, but also act upon this perception and interact with this world. We believe that's a good setup to study computer vision in the context of a bigger problem. Furthermore, there is the perception that that might be one of the next big challenges in the computer vision community. In order to drive progress in embodied AI, one needs a good benchmark for embodied AI. And the solution which has been adopted as of now is to study embodied AI in simulation. Using a simulator provides multiple advantages. For one, there is a purely software way to conduct experiments and as a result the bar to entry for computer vision researchers is relatively low. Furthermore, using simulation allows for reproducible and thus comparable experiments. A good simulator for embodied AI needs several properties. Among everything, it needs to provide high fidelity simulation of the real world. In other words, high photorealism, as well as very accurate modeling of the physics. Simulation, though, is hard. Over the last few years, we have seen a large body of different simulation engines used for embodied AI and related. Many of these engines have reached high fidelity of photorealism and physics realism. However, none of them is perfect as the real world. In this challenge, we would like to bridge the gap between simulation and reality. In particular, we provide a different way to evaluate embodied AI, a benchmark which is run in the real world directly. We provide a real world apartment and a real robot and a way for participants to use the same interface they use for simulation to conduct experiments in this real apartment on the real robot. Furthermore, this setup allows for repeatable and reproducible experiments. As a result, we can compare the results across different participants and in this way understand what works and what doesn't work. Finally, this, exactly, this exact home is replicated in simulation, which allows one to understand better the simulation to reality gap. In this workshop, in this challenge, we define embodied AI as point navigation. Point navigation is the problem of driving a robot from a starting position to a goal position, the latter being specified in terms of its coordinates with respect to the starting position. This problem has a lot of interesting challenges. For one, the robot needs to understand the physical space around it as well as to a varying degree the semantics of this space in order to make correct decisions. Further, it needs to control a hardware platform and as such it needs to deal with continuous control dynamics in the real world. This challenge is related to other challenges, in particular the ones within this workshop. We have two more other challenges, the first one being Habitat, which is conducted exclusively in simulation. Therefore, this challenge does not provide the physics challenges we have in our challenge. The second challenge or competition is the Robothor. Robothor is conducted as ours in a real world. The difference, though, is that this challenge uses a different simulator to train models on. This simulator is based on computer-generated worlds of 
homes while our simulator uses scans of real buildings. While embodied AI challenges have a relatively short history in the computer vision community, in the robotics community, conducting challenges in the real world has a longer history. Notable examples include the Urban Grand Challenge, the RoboCup, the Amazon Picking Challenge. The main differences between the robotics challenges and ours is that in these robotic challenges, the participants have not only to build the intelligence behind the robot, but also build the robot and operate it during the challenge. We believe that by providing a software-only interface, will allow computer vision researchers to participate at a bigger scale, easier scale. Further, our setup allows for replica in simulation, which makes development easier, better debuggable, and also allows for training algorithms, which hasn't been the case as of now. Finally, having full control of the execution of the robots gives us the ability to have more reproducible setup, which previous challenges do not have to that degree. The price we pay for these advantages is that the scale at which we can run operations, both the size of the world as well as the number of trials we can run, is smaller than the ones people have done in prior robotics challenges. My name is Cheng Shu Eric Lee, one of the organizers of the challenge. Now, I would love to give you guys a deep dive into our challenge setup. In this challenge, we utilize LocalBots, a mobile manipulator that has a non-holonomic base and a small arm in the front. On the top of the robot, we have an Intel RealSense RGBD camera that provides a constant stream of color images and depth images at around 30 Hz as shown on the right hand side. The camera is also tilted down by 20 degrees so that it can see what is immediately in front of the robot. Finally, we have a one beam laser scanner only for localization purpose to update the goal locations and for automatic resetting during real world evaluation. To define the point goal navigation task more rigorously, we have as inputs RGBD images, goal locations with respect to the robots, and also the robot's current linear and angular velocities. The output of the system is a continuous action as a twist command at 10 Hz. We have set the maximum linear velocities to be 0.5 meter per second and the maximum angular velocity to be 90 degrees per second based on local bot's technical specs. In addition, the participants have the freedom to use discrete actions if they prefer as the output of a policy network, for instance, and to write an adapter or a controller to execute these discrete actions through twist command. Furthermore, the termination conditions are the following. The robot will succeed if it converges to the goal with the tolerance threshold of 0.36 meters, which is the length of the diameter of the robot base. Or it will fail if it collides with the environment um, or used up all the time available, which is 50 seconds in our case. We invited the participants to tackle three different scenarios for point goal navigation. The first one is navigating in a static environment. This is by far the most widely studied navigation scenario in previous literature. The robot needs to navigate to the goal without colliding with the environment. The second one is navigating in an environment with interactive objects. In this scenario, there will be small objects such as shoes or storage baskets scattered around on the floor that may block the robot's way to the goal. In other words, there might not be a collision-free path from the robot initial pose to the final goal, and the robot needs to push away these small obstacles to clear its path to reach the goal. Therefore, in this scenario, we allow or even encourage the robot to interact with these interactive objects while still disallowing its collision 
with static objects such as walls or large furniture. The main challenge here is that the robot needs to understand the environment semantically and learn about which objects are interactive and which are not. The third scenario is navigating in an environment with dynamic agents. In this scenario, there will be dynamic agents such as humans or other robots moving around in the space. The robot needs to understand their navigation patterns and avoid colliding with them before reaching the goal. In our experiments, we use a turtle bot as our dynamic agent. We have two development phases and two evaluations in sim and in real, respectively. We rank the entries based on performance in simulation, and then we take the top participants and evaluate their policies in the real world. In particular, we have two weeks of death phase in real, in which we iteratively test participants' policies on real robots and give them quantitative and qualitative results and feedback so that they can further improve their solutions and close the sim to real gap. As the training data, the participants have access to a 3D reconstructed apartment called Castro, which is where their policies will be tested in the real world. Part of the apartment is hidden and reserved for evaluation purpose. We also provide over 500 reconstructed scenes from I. Gibson as additional training data. During evaluation, we test the participants' policies in both the seen and the unseen part of the Castro house to gauge their generalization capability. So what are the main highlights of this challenge setup? The first highlight is the high realism of our environments. Unlike existing synthetic dataset such as SunCG, our environments are acquired through RGBD scanners from real-world apartments and houses. Therefore, our scenes have extremely high visual fidelity and ecological room and object layout. The second highlight is that we provide the exact same environment both in simulation and in the real world, thereby minimizing the domain gap to the fullest. This allows us to have a fair comparison between simulation and real experiments. This also allows us to answer the question of generalization from simulation to the real world without the confounding factor of generalization from one scene to another scene. Both of these two highlights are made possible by the I. Gibson environment, developed by Stanford Vision and Learning Lab. We provide a very large dataset of real-world reconstructed buildings. Among them, we have 10 partially interactive scenes where most of the main furniture can react to robots' interaction, and one fully interactive scene with more to come. We can simulate 14 different types of robots with rigid body physics enabled by Pi Bullet to accomplish navigation and manipulation tasks. We also provide a large number of interactive objects with realistic texture and physical attributes so that the agent trained in I. Gibson can be deployed on real robots in a seamless manner. We believe that with the extraordinary physics realism, visual quality, rendering efficiency, and ecological environments provided by iGibson, we are able to offer the right platform to produce high-performing robot learning systems and allows zero-shot generalization to the real world. The third highlight we would love to showcase is a repeatable robotics experiment setup in the real world. We created an automatic pipeline that can evaluate navigation policies for hours without human intervention. In short, 
This pipeline automatically reset the agent to the next episodes, detect collision while executing the policy, and log the results once the episode is finished. We also record webcam footages, as you can see on the slides, and share them with our participants during the dev phase to help them improve their solutions and overcome the sim to real gap. Finally, we are able to make our challenge easily accessible through Eval AI portal. Once we doctorize all of our dependencies, the participants are able to easily develop their solutions on top of our base Docker, evaluate their solutions on the cloud, and retrieve results in a timely manner. During the dev phase in the real world, with some additional ROS integration, we are able to easily deploy the participants' submissions on real robots in the real world. Through this challenge, we are able to take one step forward in the direction of making robotics research go remote. Next, Roberto is going to talk more about the results, analysis, and conclusion of our challenge. In the following, we will analyze the results of the challenge. First, we are glad to officially announce the ranking of the first sim to real visual navigation challenge with iGibson. The winner of this year's challenge is the team Inspire.ai with Xiao Long, Xiaoping, and Xian Zhu. Second entry is the Dan team from the National University of Singapore. Third entry is Team Joan from Georgia Tech and Facebook. And fourth entry is the Team VGAI from TCS Research. We have multiple participants in simulation, but only these four pass to the real world phase. Congratulations to all participants and especially to the Team Inspire.ai that also receives a state of the art GPU card from our sponsor NVIDIA. Besides our, our participants, we also evaluated two baselines, the ROS Navigation Stack and SAC. We want to mention that the ROS Navigation Stack required privileged information to execute, namely LiDAR signals and a map, but we consider it's important to evaluate to this very, very well used and extended navigation solution from the community. How did we evaluate the entries? We consider two metrics, success rate and SPL. The success rate measures how often does the robot reach the goal area, defined as a circle of 36 centimeters of radius around the goal location. This radius is the diameter of a robot. SPL measures the mean normalized inverse path length weighted by the success. The evaluation consisted of 10 different navigation task instances, defined by the start and goal pairs shown in the image. Three of them are defined in the scene area, three in the unseen area, and four have the start and goal in different parts of the scene and unseen areas. We evaluate the 10 task instances in the three scenarios we mentioned before, static, interactive, and dynamic. To reduce stochasticity in the evaluation, we run three trials per task instance and a scenario and compute the mean score, totaling 90 trials per entry. Let's now see some of the entries in action. On the left, we see the winner entry attempting one of the trials in the interactive scenario, pushing away some obstacles to go through. On the right, we see the second entry in a trial also of the interactive scenario. Here we see the winner entry in one of the trials of the dynamic scenario. You can see the dynamic obstacle, a second robot, moving in a predefined manner that needs to be avoided by our participant. Let's now compare all the entries side by side. The winner entry, the team Inspire.ai, use a recurrent policy network trained with distributed PPO and discrete action space. The second entry, Team Dan, used a composable set of modules for visual perception, state filtering, planning, and local control in continuous action space. The third entry, Team Joan, used a recurrent policy network trained with PPO in continuous action space. 
The fourth entry, Team VGAI, used deterministic path planning on a map generated with a neural slam, discrete actions, and an object detector from the interactive and dynamic scenarios. Our SAC baseline uses feedforward network with continuous actions, and the ROS navigation stack uses privileged information from a map and a LiDAR to perform global pl path planning with local replanning and continuous actions. How well did the participants and the baselines perform per scenario? Surprisingly, some baselines, like the second participant, Tim Dan, performed better in more complex scenarios, like the interactive one, than in the static scenario. The analytical ROS navigation stack, using privileged information from LiDAR and a map, performs really well in the static scenario, but its performance drops considerably in more complex and unstructured scenarios like the interactive and the dynamic ones. We observe that the difficulty of the navigation task seems to increase also with the length of the trajectory, as could be expected. However, we observe a tendency to perform similarly for all large trajectories over 10 meters. Now we turn the attention to the question, how much was the gap between sim and real? All teams suffer considerably from this gap, dropping, for example, from almost 0.8 SPL in simulation to 0.26 in real world for the case of the winner in the static scenario. The largest drop is in the static scenario and interactive scenario, less so in the dynamic scenario. Where is this gap originating? We think there are several factors based on our evaluation and observation of the entries. First, there is a large actuation gap. The way the simulated robot and the real robot react to some action commands is very different, mainly due to effects like motor slack and stiction. Second, there are modeling differences, especially in the floor properties. This adds to the forward model gap from actuation. And third, even with our high quality iGIPs on rendering, there are differences in the images, as you can observe in the examples on the right. These differences are caused by inaccurate or not existing models of sensor noise, especially in depth images where reflections on some materials can cause the lack of depth measurements or ground values. Are the solutions overfitting to the same part of the environment? Yes, but not excessively. The aggregated performance of the solutions is higher in the part of the environment that was available to train and develop indicating some fine-tuning of the solutions to the environment. How stochastics were the runs? Although we only performed three trials per task instance, we observed less variance than we expected, as is shown in, this, in these plots with the trajectories. However, small variance in a, in a trajectory can lead to complete different results, as we can see in the bottom left plot, where a small difference in the trajectory leads to Termin different termination criteria, possibly due to collisions. Where were the most common failures and termination modes? The most frequent one was to terminate due to collisions. Not surprisingly, most collisions happen in the scenario with dynamic obstacles. In the interactive scenario, most failures are due to timeout. We observed that the solutions try to avoid interacting with the interactive objects and they um, perform large detours or even they were unable to reach the goal. Digging deeper into the causes of collision, we observed that in static and interactive scenarios, most collisions are with door frames and corners due to either imperfect low-level control or possibly also network latencies. In the dynamic scenario, most collisions are within, with the dynamic obstacles because the solutions are not able to avoid them. In the case of running out of time, the main reasons are four. First, sometimes angular velocity is too small, cannot overcome the static friction of the carpet and the solutions end up not moving. Second, some solutions map and plan and that can take too long if it is too frequent. Third, we also observe jerky behavior, frequent changes in linear velocity, making the robot to wobble and create image blur. And the final reason we observe is some zigzag caused by overshooting on the orientation, which leads to long trajectories that barely move forward. Based on this analysis, we can draw some conclusions on two main questions. 
The first one, where are we in solving scene to real for visual navigation? We think that even using a realistic simulator like the iGibson did not completely eliminate the gap and many teams ended up hand tuning their solutions to fix it. Moving forward, the community should try to first reduce this gap by improving the realism of the simulations, both in actuation and in virtual sensor signals. And second, continue developing methods that can bridge the scene to real gap, for example, by syncing simulation and reality and closing the loop with cycle consistency. The second question is, is point navigation solved, assuming a compass is given to indicate the location of the goal? We think that this problem is still not completely solved. In clean, static environments, classical solutions like the ROS navigation stack can perform well, assuming additional sensor signals. In our setup, with only RGBD images and the compass, the best solution only achieve a 33% success rate. However, the performance of these solutions and all evaluated solutions drops significantly in more realistic scenarios with obstacles that need to be pushed or avoided. We see that in these less structured domains, learning-based solutions outperform analytical ones like the ROS navigation stack. We think this clearly indicates that there are things to do for us as a community if we want to see robots navigating in unstructured human environments. We should move away from clean, controlled navigation environments and study environments with obstacles that need to be interacted, what we call interactive navigation, or with dynamic obstacles like humans in social navigation. Finally, I'd like to thank all the iGibson team from Stanford and our collaborators from Google. Especially, I would like to thank Faye and Eric for the impressive work. This work reflects on the very positive feedback from the participants that encourage us to continue providing this service to the community in the future. We think that allowing anyone from anywhere in the world to test their solutions without the need of buying and maintaining a robot is a way to democratize access to robotics and AI. Thank you for watching and contact us if you have any further questions. Bye.